hey booktube chelsea the reading outlaw here in what seems like even worse lighting than usual my apologies to finally bring you guys another video it's my august wrap up and by august i mean september this is what's happening to me this month guys this is why i've been a little mia this is why i haven't been on booktube i have just felt like this month kind of losing my mind a little bit. <laughs> so as you guys may have noticed, I took last week off too. It was kind of another impromptu break. Sorry guys, I just kind of wasn't feeling it. This month's been a little bit of a rough one. Like I said, I kind of am all over the place with back to school stuff at work starting and everything just kind of going haywire. So instead of me complaining to you guys and explaining to you guys why I haven't been here, let's just be here together. And let's talk about the books. I'm going to talk about all the books that I read this month in the month of September. There weren't a ton. It's been a little bit of a slower month for me, especially after August. But there are some, so I'll show them to you. The first one, and the reason I was gone most of the month, is because I was finishing This Bad Boy, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I read probably like four to 500 pages of this 1,000-page book in the month of September. So this was a big chunker of one. Uh, I enjoyed it. I had a couple issues with it. I will have longer thoughts later in a review video coming out later this week for you. But suffice to say that in a thousand pages, there was a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stories started, a lot of threads laid, but it is the first in what Brandon Sanderson had said will be, I think, a 12 part series. They'll probably all be about this big, if not bigger. Um, so yeah, just starting off on the right foot, guys. Next up, I finally finished a book that has been lingering, which was a little bit of a theme this month, and that is Dead House Gates by Steven Erickson, which is the second book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series. I'm it's coming if thinking about what to say about this book is tough for two reasons. Because it's the first well, it's the second in a series that is very long and has a very, very high learning curve. But what actually happens in this book is very interesting. There are several good moments. Uh, again, I will have more thoughts on this one also in another review video coming up later. But for now, I will just say that it was good enough that I am planning on reading the third one. Because I hear that after the third one, the series really takes off. But I didn't love it enough. Like, I, I didn't love it. I wasn't, I wasn't crazy about it. It was like a three-star read for me. And there are reasons, which I will talk about in the other video. And last up for the physical books that I have to show you, I read the most adorable little middle grade book called George by Alex Gino. Alex Gino is a genderqueer author who prefers to go by the moniker they, or the pronoun they, and they wrote this book about George, and the thing about George is that George knows that George is really Melissa. George knows that he is not a he, he is a she. And when it comes time for the school to put on a play of Charlotte's Web, George really, really more than anything wants to play Charlotte. So it is a story about his classmates and his friends and his parents and himself. And, you know, kind of there. I'll have another video about this, too. You guys are going to get all kinds of review videos coming up. But I think the thing I like about most about George is that George knows who George is. The struggle isn't for George and figuring out who George is. It's for George and helping other people figure out who George is. So yeah, it's a teeny tiny little book. It's middle grade. So the print is big. The lines are, you know, the line spacing and the margins. It's a super, super quick read, but it is so, so overwhelmingly important. And I don't think that I could more highly recommend this book to enough people. So take the couple hours it'll take you to read it go sit down with it and just you know just learn a little bit or or see yourself reflected in children's literature or see some of the amazing things that even literature for you know the literature that seems to children literature that's aimed at children can still seem to accomplish ah words are so hard guys um also this month i have finished up some stuff that i don't physically have copies of to show you I finished up volumes four, five, wait, three, four, and five of um, Morning Glories. I finished up volume three, which is called P.E., volume four, which is called Truants, and volume five, which is called something. 
I'll have everything uh, linked down below. But I did finish all three graphic or three graphic novels this month, all in the Morning Glory series. I am liking the series more as it continues, but it is still a whole big bundle of like, what the fuck is happening? Um, Morning Glories is one of those comic book series where each volume is more questions than answers. So I'm kind of taking that like reader risk where I'm weighing not knowing what the hell is going on now with like hopefully a super awesome payoff. So I have my fingers crossed that whatever the ending for Morning Glories is, it's big. It's a big one. And with everything that's going on in the series, I have a pretty good feeling it's going to go like in a good direction, in a positive way. Keep your fingers crossed for me, guys, because if I have sunk all this time in and it ends lacklusterly, I'm going to be a little peeved. <laughs> um, also, this month I read Haruki Murakami. Ooh, I have it. I have it right here. Haha. -ha. I love being prepared. Surprise prepared. I have Haruki Murakami's The Strange Library, which is another, I showed this in my last video, but just in case you didn't see my last video, is a very, very interesting piece of design. It opens like this. And then throughout the book, there are, um, like, full, of course, not on the page I'm open to have them, like, full color page illustrations. It's, like, Japanese pop art. And it's just a strange little story about a boy and a girl and a goat man who are stuck in a very strange little library. If you've never read a Murakami like I hadn't, I think it's a really good introduction. I also think it makes a perfect read now that we're getting into October because it's all spooky and creepy and kind of gothic-y and what happens. It reminded me a little bit of Pan's Labyrinth, but yes, definitely pick it up. Definitely check it out. If you can manage to get your hands on a physical copy, I would highly recommend it. So, other than that, what have I been doing this month? Well, I have been listening to some audiobooks. I finished up um, the, I don't remember what it's called, the Voices, the Voices of the Ocean, the Voices Within Us. It's, it's basically about a woman's, um, like, year-long, several-year-long look into dolphins, uh, the science of dolphins, basically trying to answer the question of like why human beings kind of innately show and feel this connection to the animal that we don't necessarily get with other animals or that other animals don't necessarily show to us. So she talks about like the way that sociology looks at dolphins and the way psychology looks at dolphins and the science of the dolphin brain and the, and you know, and granted she talked and she spent several ta chapters talking about like dolphin hunting and, and what happens in Taiji and blackfish and kind of obviously kind of the, some of the big things that may pop into your brain when you think about dolphins and whales but it was absolutely fascinating I will link to it down below and put the cover up if I can find it and the last thing that I've been doing the thing that has been taking most of my time I have fallen down the witch please rabbit hole if you guys do not know what this is I'm sorry and feel glad that now that you do know what it is you can have it in your life it is two Canadian um, professors who sit down and talk about the Harry Potter books and movies and the episodes are each like at least an hour long if not more than that for the longer books there's usually two episodes and they do everything from talking about uh, the pedagogical methods of the teachers at Hogwarts to talking about um, race and gender and body issues they spend a lot of time kind of Hi, you know, being hypothetical or theorizing about what the women's health situation is, and what the sexual health situation is in the world of Hogwarts. They just do a lot of really great academic lens interpretations. There's a lot about interpretation theory and a lot about the labor party and the labor movement, all these things that get wrapped up in Harry Potter that if you're not, or if you have not done a close reading as I have not, to me, they are you know, these amazing, amazing books of chi of my childhood that I haven't necessarily spent a lot of time considering on a scholarly level. So I've just been like, it's been guys, all which please all the time in these years. And I've absolutely loved it. So that wraps up my reading month for September. Like I said, there wasn't a whole, whole lot. It's definitely a slower month for me, but I really enjoyed pretty much everything I read. And yeah, that about wraps it up. Let me know in the comments below what you read this month, what you loved, what you didn't. If you've read anything that I have shown you, definitely let me know down below. As always, like, subscribe, and I will make sure to see you guys elsewhere around the internet. Bye.